Yo, yo salutations, everyone, and welcome to. I, is this the inaugural? Is this the first design therapy? Like the first official, 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 official. The real deal. Uh, welcome, you guys, um, to design therapy. First, you know, Jose would like for all you guys to like and subscribe, follow us in all of the places on the interwebs, Twitter, internet, all the internets. Um, we, uh, everything that we're talking about today was really, has really come out of core. Um, core is a brand strategy framework, um, that we use to really push forward all of our cultural initiatives. Uh, we use it in rebranding, we use it in design, um, and we, you know, have used it as a foundation for design therapy. So, uh, our official title card, welcome you guys to design therapy. Uh, I am your host, Keone Chong, uh, with my co-host, Jose Kabaler and Mary Gribben. Hello. Hello. She's, she's there Hi, somewhere. Mary. Where are you at, Mary? Hi, I'm right here. There she is. Yeah. We are the, uh, the, uh, tantamount trio. How's that? I'm going to quote Colleen, the weirdos. We are the weirdos. Totally. Look, at those, look at those weirdos. How cute. <laughs> those are some cute weirdos. Yeah, and uh, we are so excited to be here with you, um, you know, to provide a safe space for growth, um, you know, to to really help guide you guys in your personal and professional development and uh, to help you guys solve any of the, the challenges that you have in this life, in this game, uh, which is alluding to the sermon of the day. Boom. So uh, why are we doing this? You know, like, what's this all about? Um, we are preparing for launch. You know, we have been doing this webinar for the, uh, for about the last year now, and we've had a lot of growth. You know, we started with purpose. Um, we did circles where we did a lot of live projects. We've uh, explored, you know, design therapy as it stands. And really what we're building is a it's a platform for purpose-driven professionals uh, who are designing the future uh, so you know whether you're a creative whether you're you know an engineer whether you're a scientist you know you might be in policy uh, an architect exactly you could be in finance you know wherever your space is you know uh, you're driven by purpose and really trying to create a new uh, vision for the world uh, we're here to help you on that path. So, uh, what is the system? Boom. It's a social learning experiment. Tools, community, and guidance to empower the next generation of creative leaders to redesign the world. Woo! So, let's talk a little bit about our agenda today and, uh, you know, what, what we hope that uh, we can deliver to you guys. Um, so, we're going to stop. What are we going to stop? Start with the drop-in. Uh, I'm gonna spend about 15 minutes in that. Then we're gonna go into the defrag, which is really about setting the mindset, the container uh, for today's sermon. Um, we're gonna dive into the system accelerator. So this is the synthesize, this is us synthesizing all of your feedback into um, the accelerator program. And this is wholly based on your feedback, guys. Um, you know, I didn't start with anything preconceived. I took your feedback and we synthesized it together. Uh, Jose and Mary and I, we went through and reviewed it. Um, and, you know, it's it's an incredible uh, thing that, that you guys have provided. And we're excited to co-create this with you guys. Um, after we discuss that and share, uh, we'll talk about the download. So what the download will look like, our, what the download is. Um, and you know we're going to dive into it we talked a little bit about it in our email to you guys all inviting us and today we're going to talk about game theory uh and how it applies to our life and we're going to talk about infinite and finite games um we're going to have a whole conversation uh it's going to be a conversation with you guys um and then we'll get into the upload and then we're going to end as always with music and no cookies Hopefully some fruit. You, you, you can have you can have cookies. I'm, I'm not. I'm, ha I'm having a, a trail mix. There it is. 
and um and we're gonna hang out and just chat and it's free form the conversation after that so uh let's drop in so what i'd like for you guys to do is uh in the chat um share your name your location and uh tell us about one of your favorite cartoon or anime heroes and why and uh i'll model that for you so my name is keoni chong i am in los angeles and one of my favorite cartoon or anime heroes it's an anime and his name is vash the stampede and he is called the 66 double billion dollar man and he is a man that fights for peace and love regardless of the outcome uh he sacrifices himself um, tirelessly uh, for the protection of the people that he loves and for the protection of humanity and um, he is incredible and you know he always reminds me that no matter how difficult the situation gets uh, you can always stand for what you believe and you can fight for what you believe and then I'm going to pass the torch pew, to Mary to Mary <laughs> I'm literally like googling, googling characters for anime right now. I'm gonna be honest, like it's not. Well, my... you know, there's like Wonder Woman. You know, there's there's the. It could, there's be, anybody, it you know? could be Yogi Bear. It could be exactly. like. Exactly. I have my my favorite. Um, Powerpuff film Girls is the Ponyo film, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, we already talked. We talked about this a while ago. Mm. Um, so Ponyo because... is an amazing film by. Miyazaki, mm-hmm. yeah, and um, I love the goldfish character. I love, I love all the characters in that in that um, that film, and it's just so beautifully done. And and you know, the um, the goldfish were, like befriends the little boy, and and mm-hmm. it's clear, you know, like gender wise, what the goldfish isn't clear on what it wants to be. If it, <laughs> I just mm-hmm. love it. I, you know, it's like this gorgeous ex- exploration of self and like, you know, the underwater scenes are so beautiful. It's just really lovely. So I, um, yeah, that's my favorite. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Mary. Yeah. Okay. All right. I have to really think here um, because I have so many, but I, you know what it's going to be. It's, it's um, my name is Jose Caballero. Or Ka Baller, California Baller. I'm in Los Angeles, California, and um, I'm manning the door here, uh, letting everybody in. Um, my favorite is one. Uh, my favorite anime is One Piece. I'm rewatching it now, and uh, the captain uh, Luffy, because he is such a a silly kind of like goofball and like just uh, does like what I call Jack Sparrowing. He just goes in the direction of his heart and doesn't care. Um, and then his team, but his team really trusts him and follows him because um, his heart is always about doing the right thing. And it's always about fighting you know, injustice and fighting for the others and fighting for his friends. So no matter what, he never gives up. Um, so it's a really, really, it's the best leadership and management course you can take is just watching one drop. Awesome. At least for the future, it's, you know, we're being programmed basically by anime. Yeah. It's, uh, but there are worse things to be programmed by. Um, I'd like to invite a couple folks up to, uh, to chat a little bit. Um, Marcio, you know, uh, would you like to come on, you know, and drop in? Tell us uh, your name and location and uh, your favorite cartoon hero. Mauricio or? Uh... Marcio. There's Marcio Guerrera in Carolina. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's up, dude? Hi, guys. Uh, are you listening? Uh, sound is okay. Sound is yes, okay. Yes. Okay. I'm here with Carolina, my daughter. Uh, hey, we're from Portugal. Hello, guys. This is hey. My name is Carolina. Hey, Fair Carolina. Fair enough. <laughs> he says, <"Mrs." laughs> um, we both like uh, Dragon Ball, uh, but she also likes Gravity Falls, and uh, for me. Son Goku is is a role model, a role model as a hero, uh, growing on his strength, uh, always to be ready to to grow, and that's a bit what uh, of what I 
intent to do with with branding and everything and she just likes all the characters and she's next to me reading the book mm. yes uh, oh, from Gra yeah. gravity falls i don't know if you guys know this light is not proper um uh, well uh, basically uh 7 p.m here in portugal so uh, well i think for now is is everything So I'll, I'll pass the word to someone else. Thank you so much, Marcia. Ooh. I see some great ones in the chat. Um, let's see. Pape, how about Pape, Pape. yeah. Pape, you want to come He's up? He's loving the dropping. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Pape hey. here from Panama. Uh, my favorite anime character would be Naruto. I love his personality and the transformation he faces from the beginning to the end. He's kind of the outcast. No one likes him. He's not accepted by the village. And he's got this demon inside that at the end. Well, no, I won't say, okay, no. I, if, if someone is watching Naruto, I won't say that part. But basically, he comes <laughs> here and he becomes like the best version of himself. And he, he kicks ass to any other character, even Goku or anyone. But... We're not prepared for that conversation. Yeah. So yeah, it would be Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, man. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Mila, would you like to come to the stage and drop in? Okay, I have to unmute. Okay. Um, so hi, I'm Mila from Chicago, Mila312. And my favorite uh, anime movie is This movie called it's called it's in Tagalog, um, and the the character's name is Chocolate. So however you say Tagalog and Chocolate is the name of the movie, but it was all in Tagalog and you just has subtitles. Because but the premise was that it was a little girl who was autistic, I think, and her job was to go and beat people up to get her mom's money because her mom was the landlord. Mm -hmm. So she would do like ninja style and like she's like give me my mom's money, and then she would just go karate style and kill you. And then, me back like all bloody here's your three dollars mom they owed it to you <laughs> <laughs> she was like the enforcer she protected mama i love that oh Thank wait wait know. and i got the tattoo of her uh her name on my side <laughs> wow you really like that animation that challenge it's my favorite Naruto <laughs> tattoo. yeah um thanks guys Bye. thank you thank you uh sergio you want to come to the stage yay nay hey, okay this is steven anthony yeah um so i'm going to read off a couple of these because some of these are fantastic um cliff what's up cliff vegeta Kakarot! <laughs> and it's because he started out as a villain, masked in a lot of pain, but through interacting with genuine people, he realized his strength and didn't lie in his selfish intent. His strength was in his cultural pride and his love for his family. Dude, man, you and me both. Vegeta's my favorite character. My brother and I would play Dragon Ball Z for hours, and I was always Vegeta or Frieza. Frieza was, he was kind of badass too. Um, let's see what else we've got uh cassie daria and she's in uh arizona united states and uh she could totally relate to her sarcasm and viewpoint of the world uh D daria was awesome you know she was a creative making her own way in the world she didn't subscribe to the rules or the limitations of society i totally love that um let's see we'll read one more <laughs> tino from Los Angeles, California. His favorite character was Wiley Coyote because that guy never gives up. That dude never gave up. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I love that. He played, he played the infinite game. He did. <laughs> right. That's for sure. Game. That's for sure. That's beautiful. Oh, guys, I love these drop-ins. Um, so much and, ambition, yeah. I know, right? And then um, we'll end it with Hania because we are all Hania. <laughs> Um, and uh, Hania is from Germany, and for her, she is hers was Superwoman, 
and it was because she was not limited by the forces of Earth. Mm. Beautiful. And she had that whip. <laughs> Alrighty, so guys. I, I really, I like when she takes the mans like this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this part. One. <laughs> yes. Powerful women deserve all the respect in the world. Okay, guys. So uh, we're going to move from the drop in and we're going to dive into the defrag. And so this is sort of like the container for today as a whole. And, um, you know, it was just really powerful to me. And Mary actually gave me this quote yesterday as we were talking through the accelerator program. And uh, it goes like this. You are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. And that's a roomy quote. And, you know, it, it's so good. really. Yeah, right. Um, Jose, what does that mean to you? Well, I mean, the reverse, sometimes we really think that our impact is just, oh, I'm just like a little tiny drop in the ocean. Um, and I think Shaquille said something interesting last week uh, about, you know, he's all the things that make him who he is. Um, so you are the entire ocean in a, a drop. So kind of like the reverse of that, um, all of the things kind of distilled down in you. It's very much about, about um, all of it being you know, one and the same inside is outside etc so it's really powerful it's a beautiful quote by Rumi awesome. Rumi is kind of like one of those like what what's he talking about yeah yes there it is um and Mary you know you you provided the quote for me last night and it was like you it was something that was you knew it right away we had the conversation and we were talking about it and, and it just came to your mind so instantaneously um, yeah I just saw it in a in like an art piece this past week so mm. that's why and it really struck me yeah. um so that yeah so i had just seen it recently and for yeah i mean it's like you have everything you need within yourself you know mm. the whole, yeah the whole ocean is in you and um and yeah like jose said i think it's like we're all connected and and um you're not just a drop in the ocean you know right Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. <clears throat> so as we move forward, we're just going to recap a little bit and we're going to talk about this story so far. And, you know, we've been on this incredible journey to get to this point here. And, um, you know, we've we've kind of gone through core, um, you know, we've gone through, uh, you know, really what is the thing that drives you in your fire. Um, and we've done purpose, values, and skills, but you know, how does this all correlate? And what is, what does it mean? You know, as as we move forward. Um, so, we've talked, you know, at the beginning of our sessions, just about a year ago. Um, you know, we we went through going through skills, value, and purpose, and what drives you. And now we're weaving it all together. Um, you know, we we understood that. I understood that we needed to co-create. We understood that we needed to co-create together. Um, and so how could we build a platform? You know, how could we take this to the next level? How could we take the next step in our journey together? And, and it was a really uh, interesting conversation just to share that, that, that what, where it kind of came from, meaning we, we, Mary had her point of view. You had your point of view. I had my point of view about the accelerator program and we're like, uh, okay, stop collaborate and listen to quote when eyes, which is horrible. So we just said, let's do a focus group and let's just talk to, to the people. And it, all of the things came from the data and Keone did an amazing job with the focus group. Yeah. And you know, this is the focus group <laughs> and this was the feedback from everyone, you know, and I, and I think this is so important because this is, this is everyone's feedback, you know, like everybody, I, I wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to provide input and make sure that their voices were heard. And I went through, every single comment if you guys looked at the google sheets it is crazy it took hours but it was exciting like i was it was really um engaging um and i'm really honored you know to to have spent the time to have built these relationships with you guys and and to hear how we you know impacted your lives and how we can take that further to the next step and so here is what the system accelerator is going to look like it's the future of work, it's community, it's collaboration, and it's guidance. So 
um, we're going to have a section for onboarding, which is, you know, welcome to the community, you know, hop on board, check out the ship, you know, there's all these different interesting things that we can do here. And so uh, it's going to be, you know, really basic. We're going to talk about frequently asked questions, our purpose, our values, you know, the community roles and the infinite game, uh, which we're going to talk about today. Um, and the infinite game is sort of like our grand unifying theory. It's, it's how all of these things really connect um, and how they're all related and why we're all together and how we're able to, to really move forward together as a community. So we're going to have our broadcasts. Um, so our broadcast is going to be design therapy, as you guys are familiar with. Um, we're really starting to refine the, uh, the programming for you guys. So, you know, at the end, I would love to get you guys feedbacks on today's session. Um, we're going to core office hours is going to kick off and that's going to be on Thursdays. And that's really going to be about core and the ways that you can leverage it and apply it, the tools and the techniques, um, all of the different experiences that we've had. So for any practitioner of core, this is really like a core masterclass in a sense. Yeah, and, and it'd be nice to feature different people's case studies yes. like, um, next week when we do design, uh, when we do core office hours. I'm going to be showing some of the, everyone rebrand, like the, the design's out now. So I'm going to show how, how the core exercise is correlated to the final product. Yeah. Um, and then co-work, which is a concept that Jose and I talked about where when we're working, we're going to open up a Zoom room. And wherever you are in the world, you can come in and join and work with us. We'll have playlists going. We'll be hanging out. You can see all of us doing our thing and work, but really just a space for us to be able to work together. Um, next, we're going to have circles. And circles is about real time uh, personal and professional feedback. So um, not all of these are going to be open right away, but it's going to be a process. Um, so one of fire and core which is really about design therapy and core so projects that you're working on personally or professionally um, you can post questions if you have challenges with that you can get feedback and myself jose and mary will respond and be able to give you guys support in those spaces um, eventually we're going to have live projects so actual stuff that's going on so you can see how other folks are leveraging core um, currently, the current live project is the system, uh, and you guys are starting to see it. You guys are starting to see the tools and techniques that we're using to build this, you know, and the infrastructure. And then the meme factory, you know, where we can just have fun and just meme away and talk about all the cool and funny and quirky things that well, we have to, going to ex on. To explain that as a dream for me, and it came in some sort of download, is we're going to put all the assets up. All the fonts are our Google fonts. If you're looking at what we're doing, it's all in Google Slides. We're going to put all those assets to be available um, because our social media and all our components, and it's going to be driven by you guys. So you guys can uh, put memes together based on each of the week's downloads or based on the themes. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have, it'll, and we'll be fun and it'll be messy. It's, it's like an art room. Yeah. Um, next, we'll have a vault. And that's where we have all of our core beliefs and experiences. So mindsets. So a lot of the things that we're sharing here, you know, like the slides and stuff um, if, that are really pointed, if they really strike you, you know, we want for it to be in a place where you guys can always access those things. Uh, the principles and how we work and why we work, um, whether it's articles, things that we've written, you know, slides, all of those things will be accessible for you guys. Um, the tools and techniques that we use in our work and that we've had, you know, great success within our experiences we're gonna have in there. And then finally, documents. So think about, you know, if you need to create a brief and maybe you're a little apprehensive about a brief, Jose is gonna share some of the briefs that he used with everyone. I'm gonna share briefs that I've used with apps that I've designed, websites that I've built rebranding projects that I've done in all kinds of scopes and areas and all kinds of different applications. So for you guys, when you guys are feeling like maybe you're in a rut or you need a little bit of inspiration, it's going to be a vault that you guys can always go that you guys will have access to, um, to help you guys in your projects. And then last, we have to play y'all. And so 
there's all of these really great concepts that we want to do as a community. Um, there's the book club, you know, so for the books that I'm reading um, and the value that I'm finding from it, you know, I think it's so important uh, that you guys can really like imbue that knowledge within yourselves and to have conversations around them so we can really make sure that we understand like the true meaning and the value of these things. Um, we're going to, you know, we want to do meditation. We're going to have yoga sessions. Journaling is so important. It's been instrumental in my personal growth. Um, and so I have, there's a, a therapist um, that talks about the power of journaling that I would like to have her come and speak and kind of give inspiration. I have another friend, she does art therapy through sketching. Um, so, you know, I would like to have her come in and just speak to you guys and kind of show like the power of, of sketching movie night, right? So us getting together, you know, and watching a movie together and then maybe discussing it afterward. Anime night, right? Um, and of course, music. Um, you know, I've been a DJ, you know, for, for a huge part of my, my creative career. And I love uh, the ability to craft playlists and share music, even to spin music live. Um, so, you know, this is all about us really being able as a community, wherever we are in the world, uh, to be able to really have fun and grow together. And uh, this is the accelerator. Um, so let's talk a little bit about pricing. You know, this was uh, the feedback that we had for pricing. And so uh, we're looking at two primary tiers. Um, there's gonna be a newsletter, which would be bi-monthly, so twice a month, um, it's $30 a month or uh, yearly you could pay for 300 and it'll be a recap of like sessions, tools, and techniques. You know, it's not gonna be the full thing, but it's gonna be like, you know, just the juicy bits um, and as they relate to current events and global trends. Um, then we're gonna have membership, which is going to give you access to the email newsletter and uh, access to the entire accelerator. Um, and so that's going to give you access to broadcast. It's going to give you access to our circles, uh, to the vault, and to play. And so that's going to be monthly at $125 a month. And then soon come is the fire kit, which we're looking to launch in May. And so we're looking at tentatively at $350. And uh, the guided course, uh, which would be actually us going together as a unit, um, is going to be five hundred and five dollars and so uh with that said what i'd like to do is let's dive right into the download so if there's any questions or any oh, yeah. marcio had a question about yeah i think we should take a minute yeah, take, take a minute and digest that let it digest and breathe papa is like take my money just when there's <laughs> anime nights um, <laughs> So yeah, so here's the accelerator. Um, you know, how does this feel for you guys? Um, you know, thoughts, feedback, concerns. And while you guys are thinking, you know, so that we, one of the things that we're really concerned with is accessibility. And so uh, Patricia and I have already started the conversation. And so we understand that living standards are different across the world. And so the challenge is um, how can we make this accessible for you based in your location? So um, Patricia and I are going to be working on putting together a formula. So based on, you know, where you're living and, you know, what the currency transfer rate is um, from American dollars to your local currency, um, we're going to figure out a rate so that it's not $125 American USD for everyone. That's for Americans. Um, but we want to make sure that it's aligned um, with with your standards of living and, you know, your accessibility. And, you know, if that's still outside of uh, your scope, uh, you know, reach out to us and, you know, we'll, we'll try to work something out. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it's really important that we, we keep the community together um, as best we can. Hey, Keone. Yo, what's up? For the circles section of the accelerator, 
could you go over one more time um, uh, the real time real time personal professional feedback um, or more specifically live projects how that'll be structured. So right now we're still trying to figure that out. Um, right now. So the goal with live projects is being able to give you an inside view of projects that are actually in play and how they're moving through the design process and how they're moving through execution. So being able to see how the translation from core through a brief, through the actual production of the assets to the actual deliverables. So giving an inside perspective. I'll give you an example of a live project. There's two. One is um, Alchemista. We're working on the brief right now and I'm redoing some things. Um, with Colleen, et cetera, and with their team. So that would be, uh, you know, a, a room in, in, in the in the in the circles where you could actually follow along. The other one is the system itself. Like we're, we'll put up our all, all our documentation, just basically transparency in those projects. But those yeah. are right now the ones that we're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Mauricio, you know, for ex you're you're actually hitting on Oh, I'm sorry, not Mauricio, Marcio, excuse me. Um, you're actually hitting on one of the components that I'm really aware of, which is I know the standard of living is a lot different in Portugal. So we the price for you wouldn't be 125 American USD. It would be different and it would be correlated um, with the, the standard of living and uh, pricing in Portugal. So um, reach out to me. We'll have a conversation. Um, I want to make sure that I get your contact. And um, as soon as we get that sorted, um, we'll exactly standard of living or better. Uh, exactly, Cassie. Um, you know, the goal is to keep the community together as best we can. And that's the goal. And there'll be other mechanics that we'll do. We'll do some work study and stuff like that um, yeah. for younger members. Yeah. Okay, for the live projects, um, is that would is it potential that we could do projects for each other to like further each other's businesses? Ooh, I like that. Because so, like, like I'm you know starting to like barter with people. Like, I can write a case study, but it's harder for me to do it for myself. So it's like I could write a case study for someone else and have some like exchange there good idea so i love that concept and that's really my what i would like to see in the core circle so in the core circle when you're working on your project you're showing like hey everyone this is what i'm working on this is what i'm doing maybe i can help you with this part of your core maybe i can facilitate the core for you maybe i can help you with this part of your deliverable but core circle is really where you have like your personal or professional project that you need help with that you're trying to execute and we can help you guys from a strategic, you know, side point. Um, but within that, maybe you guys would be able to find a way to kind of help piecemeal your parts as they execute. Call it a project exchange. Yeah. There you go. There you go, Cassie. Project exchange. So like you want help on something, you can get it there and you can give help and get help. And we, we want to encourage two things. I mean, we want to encourage learning and growth and helping each other. And the, we do, it's not discouraging, like, you know, hiring each other, do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the, in the community rules and in the, in the conversation, we want to kind of talk about how to collaborate, like, effectively um, so that there isn't disappointment or there isn't, like, challenges inside the community. All communities have challenges. That's the number one issue. So that's... Uh, there was a support section and we will have like a support like where you guys can give us feedback. Yeah. Sweet. Any other questions, guys? Okay. So uh, let's move on. And let's dive into the download. So as uh, we mentioned earlier this week, uh, this download is about infinite and finite games. And, uh, you know, this quote really spoke to me. And it's actually from this book that I'm reading. And it goes like this. Finite players play within boundaries. 
infinite players play with boundaries. So, infinite and finite games. So, this slide is for where I'm doing a lot of my research in. Um, the concept came to me actually in a an article that I had read, and then I was like, "What is what is this? What is what infinite game? What is this?" And I started to dive into it, and it really became this incredibly powerful validation for the way that I've seen the world my entire life and the way that I've played the game of life, and uh, the way that it operates is this. In game theory, there's a minimum of two games, and it's the way that we associate ourselves with life, with work, with our relationships, with all of these things. And there is a finite game, which exists for the purpose of winning, and then there is an infinite game, which exists for the purpose of continuing to play. So, what are the rules to the game? Finite games. So finite games are known players, there's agreed upon rules, and there's an agreed upon objective and a winner. Baseball. Football. Debate. You guys have very clear rules under which you operate. Infinite games are known and unknown players. The rules are in constant flux and there's no end. The goal is to keep playing. So what does that look like and how does that apply to our lives? Well, this is how it looks. Players that are playing the infinite game they are trying to achieve something that is intangible and difficult to measure. Their decisions are based on their values and they exist in their ideas to perpetuate the game. While finite players, their results are tangible. It's easy to measure and they compete to win. Now, if as I'm saying this, you're starting to think about people that operate in finite ways and people that operate in infinite ways, we'll have some examples for you. So let's talk about the infinite and finite players. Here's a great example, Microsoft and Apple. Now I worked for Apple and while working for Apple, Microsoft tried to hire me to work for them. And the way that they tried to get me to work for them is they were like, hey, we're going to pay you 18% more than what Apple pays you. I had friends that were like, oh, I'll take that. And they went and they worked for Microsoft. And then they quickly was like, I can't work for Microsoft anymore. And they tried to come back. Of course, Apple didn't allow for them to come back. But the experiences were so contrasting. And I'm just going to refer not only to the products and their product strategy and their business strategy, but I'm also going to refer to their culture. So when I worked at Apple, the culture was incredible in that you were given an opportunity to take charge, to lead, to push initiatives at any and all opportunities. If there was a problem and you said, hey, Mr. Manager, I've got a problem. They'd be like, oh, well, what do you think about it? Oh, well, I think this. And they say, well, what do you think the solution is? Oh, well, I think this. And they say, okay, great. Go ahead and execute. You have the freedom. You've got the autonomy to work and figure that out. At Apple, we weren't driven by KPIs like X number of sales. You were driven by KPIs that were a little bit more difficult to, to, to really understand. You're driven by KPIs were like, how do your customers feel after interacting with you? And they had this credible NPS system that would track that, but 
it was also your job to follow up with certain customers. Hey, this is such and such. We helped you about a month ago. Just want to make sure everything is all right. How are you doing? How are things? There was this focus on really delivering value to the end user. And that's a challenge because if we look back on this chart, it's very, very difficult to measure. And for Apple, their goal isn't to sell, sell, sell. Their goal is to give every single person access to the most powerful computing solution that they can have. That's their goal. Now, if we compare that to Microsoft, and you know, we all remember the PC versus Mac ads, Microsoft tries to compete with features. We do this, we do that, we do X, we do Y, we do Z, they do this or that. They see themselves only in the context of Apple. Their world isn't about trying to create a new world. Their goal isn't about to try to create a new world. Their goal is to beat Apple. They're playing a finite game. So for them, all they can see is you have X number of features. We have Y number of features. You guys made X number of money. I made Y number of money. And they're competing to win. Steve Ballmer, who I don't know if anyone knows, is a very... <laughs> Oh, uh, Jose, you're you're muted. I was saying I love that guy because he definitely represents the idea of the finite game. His, yeah. his like ah. he's 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 a he's like the quintessential salesman. Tons of energy in your face. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. What was really Zoom. captivating about Steve Ballmer, and it really uh, uh, it really illuminated his perspective on this the game of business when he left microsoft in his last speech he goes you know what we may not have beat apple but we made more money than any other company in the process he was only concerned with winning he was only concerned with easy to measure kpis money like what that was it he didn't think about his tenure as oh my gosh i tried to push human society forward we had this incredible engineering uh, uh uh resources and we created something so that the human species would would live on and explore this or discover no, no nothing along those lines it was we didn't beat them and we made a lot of money He's only competing to win. And I think when we start to look at what people say and the way that people act, we can start to see these contrasts in our lives. We see it in our relationships, right? We all have people we know that will argue a point to the death because they feel like they have to win, right? We see it in our relationships, right? You can't. There's no winning in marriage. If you try to win in marriage, guess what? You lost the marriage. The marriage is over, right? And we know that, right? We have the friends in our lives that don't try to win anything. They just want to understand you better. They want to make sure that you're good, right? Because for them, their idea is to perpetuate the relationship. I want for this relationship to last forever. You are so valuable to me. And this applies to the way that we work and who we choose to work with and how we collaborate, right? If we can insist that the people that we work with are playing the long game, if we can insist that the people that we want to serve, our clients, are playing the long game, then you have an alignment that will grow. You have a true partnership. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to share some of the players in this game. And then I'd like to open the floor to you and, and get your thoughts. So I chose one of the most quintessential infinite players. And he came up earlier, Goku, right? 
And what's really interesting, if you guys watch DBZ, Dragon Ball Z, when you first meet him, you just think it's this dude that just wants to fight. He's like, ah, oh, I want to fight. I want to fight the biggest guy. But he's actually not trying to fight for fighting's sake. Yes, he's driven. His skill is fighting. And he knows that he's driven to become a better fighter. But here's what he says. I am the answer to all living things that cry out for peace. I am the protector of the innocent. I am the light in the darkness. I am the truth. Ally to good. Like, that's not a finish line. That is an infinite goal. That is a thing that can never be achieved. It is something that you strive to accomplish. You strive to impact to the best of your abilities. And this is why he's an infinite player. Can uh, can anybody out there think of other infinite players that uh, really resonate with them? I'd love to see it in the chat. Or if you'd like to have a conversation and chat about it. Ooh, Seth Godin. Yes, Pape. Definitely. He wants marketing and advertising and the process of relationship building to be for a greater good. Elon Musk, yes. He's trying to push forward society. He's like, if we're going to survive, we need to get off of this planet. We need to explore. Ooh, Sadhguru. That's another really powerful one, Cliff. Thank you for that, man. Anybody else? Ooh. Ichigo. Bleach. Yes. <laughs> Hardeep. Yes, the, the anime circle will be incredible. Luffy. Absolutely. Right? Mm, Marcio. He says, this topic blends too much with how I see society, so I'll just say democracy in general. That will have the intent to better the world. Absolutely. Democracy is an ideal. It's an ideal that we, if we focus on the common good, then we can push forward our society. I love that. So let's talk and look at a finite player. Now we're all familiar with this character and I'm not gonna talk about the significance of his politics. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what he believes but I am gonna tell you what he says and how he acts. It's very, very clear. We're going to win so much, you're gonna be sick and tired of winning. Winning what? Like, what are, you, what are you winning in? I would love to know. Because life isn't something that you win. Life is a journey, right? Cassie. Mm. Thinks of Peter Thiel for infinite, yes. Yeah. So for finite, for finite. So what is the definition of winning, Cliff? That's a great, great, great uh, question. And so yeah. if we go back to finite games, here are the rules of finite games. Known players, agreed upon rules, and agreed upon objective and winner. So baseball, for example. Sales is another example. I made so much money. I make this money. This is what I'm worth, right? In the business world, we are driven with this finite mindset that money is a finish line. So the accumulation of it and the drive to accumulate as much as possible and to have the most amount of money would determine that you are the winner. I don't believe that's winning. Because to me, that's, that's a finite game. And that's not a rule that I agree to. And there are so many unknowns. For example, in the concept of finance, we're dealing with cryptocurrency. What is crypto? Right? Well, that's that's definitely a manifestation of the infinite game. Um, the way it works itself is, is actually about infinite. Exactly. What, what are the one? other uh, examples? So let's move on to the other examples. And... I'm going to I'm going to end it with probably one of the most prolific infinite players in America and at least for me as someone of pan-african descent uh Martin Luther King 
and this game, this ideal, the American dream. What what's the real American dream? You know, what it, what does it state in the Declaration of Independence, right? That we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Right? So let's the quote, really simple. And it's the intro to his infamous I have a dream statement. I have a or uh, uh, speech. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. That is an ideal, right? Are we ever going to be able to stamp out, you know, prejudice, xenophobia, right? M misogyny. Chances are we never will. But what we can do is we can strive to be the best that we can, that we can create communities that imbue these values that the next generation and the generation after that and the generation after that will be born and raised with these values that we are all equal. We are all valuable. No one is more special than another person. That's the challenge. That's the infinite game. And he believe that to such an extent that we had a quarter million people show up for this speech 250,000 people and a lot of folks think that's a conservative estimate right i mean think about how many emails you get just to show up to an event and you don't show up this in the 60s are you kidding me crazy that these people came out they traveled huge distances just to listen to this man speak about an ideal he was here he was pushing forth that idea that intangible that belief that something was so great that we could accomplish it together and that is really the, the quintessential player in the infinite game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the floor for you guys and we're going to have an open conversation. And I want to talk about this. How, how does this affect you? How do you guys see this concept in your life and uh, in your lives? And, and what game are you guys playing? Hey, everybody. What's up, Cliff? So quickly, um, I was actually talking to a friend of mine about this today, uh, thinking about the path I've been on and how over the past, I don't know, 15 years or so, working as a creative professional, the goal has been, you know, art director, creative director, that's kind of the heart, hierarchical um, um, journey from being a junior designer to, you know, what the top of the profession is. And then I think being part of this community and trying to reposition myself for repositioning myself and uh, moving my career forward in a direction that I didn't quite see going in. Um, once I got to that position of, hey, you know, you're actually, you're actually part of your job is going to be a creative director, but I'm working with the ad agency right now, and that's part of the job. And when it dawned on me, it wasn't like, and I had this conversation with Keone before, it wasn't like, you know, lightning flash and clap of thunder. It was just like, oh, okay. That, that, that makes sense. And I had to sit back and take stock of how I was reacting because it was like, well, that's not how you were supposed to react or you, how you thought you would react, especially like 10, 15 years ago. And then, you know, thinking about the infinite and finite game and it's like, you know, I think I'm in that mindset of the infinite where this is just a kind of a, a pit stop on the journey, continuous journey along this road. So it stops kind of being this special marker of like, you know, oh my God, this is, just such the thing that I want to get to. It's like, no, this is part of what I'm trying to do, but um, there's so much more that I, I want for myself and my career that um, I have to keep looking forward and not overly uh, romanticize a particular position. But celebrate it, it's still celebrated. Yeah, man, I love that. Like, like congratulations, man, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, 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 that's Thank a you. symbol of, uh, of where you arrived to and where you are yeah thanks i appreciate it totally 
would anybody else like to to share or discuss you know it doesn't have to be about you personally it can be your thoughts on the concept uh, can i jump in please okay so um just thinking about it i'm kind of thinking out loud really um i think the kind of ending is both like the infinite and the finite combined like the the execution of the finite <laughs> with the with the dream with the dreams of the infinite because i mean you could be a dreamer and have like all these ideas to move that direction but um i'll use the example of microsoft apple um to be honest i'm not a huge fan of of uh lots of things that do up that that apple do and actually those exact things i don't like about them is what i like about microsoft but you're totally right i hate microsoft as a company it's like oh my god it's like they they have no idea they, it's, well I'm not gonna get in there but what i'm thinking about is like what would it be to have that level of execution with the vision that apple has right it's like that marriage of uh i like um uh, Mar uh Martin Luther King, he wouldn't gotten uh, where he got if he wasn't obnoxiously good at his execution. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that's that's my that's that's what I wanted to say. <laughs> well, you know, Mauricio, you you touched on something that I think is really important. Within the infinite game, there are finite games, right? So, mm -hmm. for example, we still have to accomplish a certain level of uh, financial resource for us to survive and live in a way that's comfortable, right? That's a finite game. We know what that measurement is, and that's something that we need to achieve. So that happens within the game. Um, you know, uh, when we, you know, and I'm trying to think of another example. I think there's a, it's a really good metaphor, Keone, if I can interject, uh, my apologies. One of the things that 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 um the Mauricio said, or how he what what and what you're reflecting, is that yes, they have to co-live together. But there's a difference between saying I'm in this situation right now, and in order to like get out of it, let's say financially, I need to become X Y Z, and you go towards X Y Z, versus saying like my purpose in my life is you know this bigger thing and you want to create something bigger than just like a design agency or design practice or like a project and that that drives who you are and that who you really are and who you, what your values are um, and, and, and what your uniqueness is and what your purpose is is really what's driving the cart versus it being like oh my god I need to get a job or I need to get this thing because a lot of times when we get stuck in the tactical and in the finite um, we just don't don't get started because out of fear um but fear is lessened when we have a bigger purpose and a bigger container than just making money or just like paying the rent though those are real and we have to address it yeah you know it's like a dance almost it is uh because again it's like what you said is like if you if you're too worried about the tactical then you're not going to do anything right because it's there's too much tacticality you can go into but I think the same is true if you go the other way. <laughs> you you won't have, you won't do anything. You're just thinking of just big dreams and stuff because then when you try to do something, you just won't hit any mark at all. Absolutely. You know, I think about it in, you know, my early stages of, of my design career and launching my agency. Um, we went through a bunch of really crappy clients and really whack projects till we got to the clients and the kinds of projects that we were really comfortable with. And I hated them. I knew that, you know, these were not the kinds of clients that we wanted to have long term. Um, but I also knew that at the stage of where I was in my career and my skill and my ability to facilitate and execute strategy that I wasn't at the level ready yet to get to this higher level, these higher clients, these super cool engagements, these really creative opportunities. And so you kind of have to build. And you know, you that those are like mini games within this overall game, which is okay, how do I take on this smaller client? How do I make sure that I don't lose money on it? How do I make sure that we're developing a process? And how do I make sure that my team is getting smarter and better so that when we level up and take a next step and get to a larger project, that maybe we can be just a touch more discerning. 
and pretty soon, you know, we were able to scale and get to a point where I could look at a project and the client would be like, hey, you know, so why should I work with you? And you're like, you know what? You shouldn't. We're just not compatible. And yeah, it's yeah. not your money. The money is great, but it's the relationship. It's the ability for me to feel comfortable giving value to your beliefs and what your vision is. Yeah, it's beautiful. It, it definitely it definitely changes the trajectory. I think somebody wants to say something. Yeah, and I, I would like to to add something to all of this because lately I've been listening a lot to Seth Godin's and his last, last book is called The Practice and it's really related to this this topic because we how they tell us to play the game is to focus on the outcome, like on the winning and like something that is really like precise and we lose sight of the most important part of life that is contemplating life and practicing and making mistakes and, and getting to play the game, you know, because when, when you focus only on the, on the, on the outcome, it, it, you, you can build fear just by thinking how big you want to go. Like I want to be the, the next Apple. And then you, you make this huge monster that you never start building because you're just too afraid of, of start of starting. Cause you put a, a finite goal and it's so big that it's, it's hard to cross. So I guess like, like just focusing on, on the practice is something that I've been, I've been working a lot. And the practice for me is being myself. Like I'm always measuring if I'm enjoying what I'm doing, if it, if it is aligns with my intention. And lately I've been facing this, like I have to make a decision. It's like I, money's coming, but I'm not really, it's not the only thing I want. And I've been seeing like other paths of growth and from like, for example, applying core to my social media, to my art, to my illustration, because I've been doing it for other people. And now it's like, I've been getting this call to keep playing my game, my practice and coming back to this. But it, it's, as Kenny said, it's just, I'm just moving around. And, and when I find a, a stop, I just come back, I readjust and I don't think too much. I'm just always trying to keep the, the motion forward. And... Yeah, you know, I'm, this is all, you know, we have the perfect illustration for it. And it's, you know, the, um, it's this right here. You know, this is the path, like we're, we're trying to get to here, you know, we're trying to get, this is our ideal. This is our dream. This is the thing that drives us. This is the infinite game. It's here. Uh, but the process to it is not a straight line. Um, although, uh, I have it pictured as a straight line here. Uh, this is really about the vision, but the actual journey, um, both professionally and personally, it looks actually like a lot like this it's messy you know we're we're going and we get distracted sometimes we get pulled out of our way because you know we have maybe resource needs or health or relationships or whatever the challenge may be this is the challenge of life but the goal is how do we persist and move forward and and really push through these challenges sometimes we have to take steps backward you know to build the momentum to make a jump you know, over an obstacle, you know, to move forward. These are the challenges, but um, we get there, you know, and you just have to keep the vision and keep the faith. It's, um, it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful concept. I, I got to read a little bit when the books arrived. And uh, I read actually, um, part of the chapter on infinite love. Um, and I, <clears throat> the, the difficult kind of challenge, and, and, and there's two books. One is the Simon Sinek book that he's been talking about recently and he's been doing talks about. And then the one that he based it on, which is actually it was published in the 80s. Um, and it's about play. What is it? What is the subtitle, Keone? About uh, play and life? Uh, it's Finite and Infinite Games, A Vision of Life as Play and Possibility. Right. So, so this idea of possibility and creating possibility and then playing towards it, you know, and a lot of us that are here in this group um, that resonate with that message, you know, whether it be Pape, whether it be Sergio, whether it be Patricia, Rashid, you know, Tino, Clifford, Cassie, uh, Daniel, etc. cetera, um, Natasha, to me, I, I, 
you know, mainly go to the quote from the from the Bible of, you know, what do you do? To, what do you gain if you gain the world and lose your soul? Um, and it's a balance, like Mauricio was saying, you have to make things forward. But I don't think a king sets out to um, or a good king sets out to. Well, that's a bad example because kings were hereditary, meaning like you, you pass it on from your child to child. But I don't think somebody who becomes successful sets out to do it driven by the financial gains solely. Yeah, there is obviously the, 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 the desire for freedom, but it's usually the desire for freedom. It's not the desire for money. It's the lifestyle that money affords you that you want, not the uh, like actual measure of it. Like right now, if you could live off crypto and not have to work, you would totally do it, right? Um, I mean, raise your hand if you would do that. Everybody would raise your hand. Most people would be like, nope. Mila's like, yep, 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 of course. So, so we, uh, we live in a world where, where scarcity and, you know, possession and getting and more uh, is uh, kind of like the operating system, this finite game. And we see it in colonialism. We see it in the destruction of the rainforest. We see it in, uh, we see it a lot in, in how industrialized business models uh, succeed by simply more and more and more and more and more and more and growth and spreading all over the world and whatever it is. And without the question of are these things actually good for the people that are consuming it, for the world itself, or, you know, morally. Um, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a, a paradigm that, that has driven us to where we are. And the reason why we're having this conversation here, when Keone brought it up, it was just like a push, like it was, we were trying to figure out the reason why we were doing the system, the reason why, why we felt uncomfortable. And we've had these conversations during the time here and during dinners. Like, why do we feel uncomfortable working in other kind of scenarios? What is it about it? And we realized is that we were always fighting uh, for freedom and to play a game that was, you know, and, and Goku was the example that Keone used. Uh, Naruto is a good example. Luffy is a good example. These are all characters that are playing for others. They're playing for good. They're playing for the world. They're not playing just you know for their own desires. Though Luffy is super, super ambitious. He wants to be king of the pirates. He wants to be king of the pirates. And he just tells everybody, I'm going to be king of the pirates. He has no, I don't know, why, why does he want to be king of the pirates? It, it's, 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 it's an emotional uh, driver from a, a, a friend and from a mentor that was a pirate and he wants to be like him and he wants to succeed and be that. So for all of us, you know, knowing ourselves, knowing who we are, knowing what drives us and what the fire under our, our souls, that's really the first level that we want to explore before we go into defining the core, before we go into like putting it into flow and building a business. Because you could, I've done it. You can build a business and then be super unhappy with what you built. <laughs> you know, because it just loses at some point that connection to the source of what, what drove you to do it, to your purpose, to your why. So, yeah. Thank you, Keone, for introducing this and for uh, making it the foundation, the, the unified theory of why the system is important. Yeah. It is an infinite game that we're all playing together. And building each other is the thing that starts the game off. So, yeah, so the upload... You know, and the thing that I want for you guys to take uh, from today's session uh, until next week is I want for you guys to think, what game are you playing? And think about the players in the game. You know, think about the individuals that you might be having challenges with um, or those that you might find that you guys are just on the same frequency and you guys are just vibing with. You know, like, what is it about it? Like, is it because you guys are playing the same game? Um, you know, I, I think it, it will be pretty illuminating, um, you know, as, as you carry this idea through the week. So, yeah, um, you know, it's 1220. So, um, you know, once again, uh, this is brought to you by Core is Magic. Magic. Um, and I'm excited about the launch of the Accelerator and really just want to very grateful. Keone has done such an amazing job just engaging the community and getting that ready. So thank you guys yeah. for participating. So as always, you can find us on Instagram. Uh, Mary A. Gribben. 
We've got me, Keone Chong, and then Jose Kabaler. And um, you know, I didn't Luffy make it onto like the Instagram. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. So yeah. So um, you know, here's you know we're working on the circles. It's a little little sneak peek on the work in progress. You can always join us on Facebook at the Core Tribe. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And now we've got <laughs> music, music and, and no, no cookies. cookies and freestyle conversation. Curious for the new people what they think. Uh, always very curious. Yeah, people that just join like Hardip and Emerson. I want to welcome Emerson. Say what's up, bro. Hey guys. <laughs> Sorry if I'm a little too talkative, my, <clears throat> my throat's still bad. I'm, I'm, a, I'm still a little sick, just a tiny little bit. Um, well, I'm not um, um, uh, not unfamiliar to uh, Jose and his work. Uh, Tino and I run for uh, ADSCBN years ago in different projects. So um, you know, guys, what I think about today's uh, talk is um, uh, I, that's my kind of thing. I mean, it's a very meta and philosophical conversation on one side and very proactive in real life scenarios on the other side. It's, um, I think it's it, we're going through a um, transformational time in society as a whole. I mean, there's a whole new generation of people thinking things more uh, deeply uh, in a more value-centric way that uh, is, you know, sparking this type of conversation. And I'm loving it. I'm loving it because even if it doesn't, you know, in, in the very infinite way, it doesn't have uh, a finite goal as to where we're going with the conversation. It doesn't really matter. I mean, uh, you're building upon the, the kind of thoughts that you find. And, um, and we're doing something that I think in, you know, before the mass communication of the internet was possible, we're doing something that we used to do, which is getting together with people and in more smaller circles uh, that have more, uh, if, if not the same way of thinking, uh, very in tune with each other in terms of uh, certain values that apply to each other in a different way. So as I, uh, as I joined, I joined a little late uh, and started seeing everybody and going to the chat and seeing the different opinions. You can literally see there's people here from different backgrounds, different um, places, most likely different languages, different cultures. And although I don't know if I can immediately say what's the common denominator, you can tell that there's some values there that just come and highlight in the conversation. So uh, first time joining this uh, series and uh, first time really hearing the topic, but I, I Got it almost uh, quite immediately because I think it's something that we are seeing more and more in society, and I'm actually really happy. And don't know what the outcome will be, but I think it's way way more positive than the than the models operandi that we've been working on for the last three decades, which is you know wealthier, richer, better, bigger, boom, and it hasn't really worked. So I think rethinking uh, society, it's, it's coming out of this type of conversation. So love it. It was great. Thank you so much, brother. So glad to have you with us. Welcome to the tribe. Any other thoughts? Anybody else? That was like a perfect way of synthesizing what we've been talking for months and months and months. So it's, it's good to see like Emerson just Describing all this from from one one call, and I, I just wanted to point that out. And thank you, Emerson, for being here. I would like to say also, we we never or, or I haven't seen us taking a time to thank like Jose and Keone and Mary, like because I, I would like to say thank you to you all for for everything you're doing. Like we I, we can see like the progress, and today the energy really or from my side I felt like we're moving forward. Like today was a big big step. And I would just like invite everyone to like, well, just let some some, some good vibe to Jose and Keone and, and Mary just for all the work they do and being here for us every Friday and all of you also being here. Like, I think that's awesome. Just wanted to say that. 
Thanks, guys. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Yeah. We're honored, really. It is an honor to host the space. Um, I, I just really want to acknowledge, you know, Keone, you know, he's a Taurus brother from another mother. And the deep, you know, kind of um, dive into into the this, into really making the community have value and into taking on ownership of, you know, driving the accelerator group. And, and it's his vision um, supported by our collective, you know, intelligence and and love and um and i'm really excited about it um as it opens up to have all of us in there and then begin generating like you know from our purpose more and more so i really appreciate those words papa and you know and all of the feedback and all of the people natasha scott who who i keep on giving her credit she's the one who a long time ago in brooklyn in the middle of the night told me build this with everyone don't build it alone. So, yeah. I just want to chime in and kind of say that um, I second uh, Papa's words and, you know, thank the creators, thank Natasha, thank everybody that, that can, you know, the collective, like always, uh, that, that's been leading the efforts to, to putting all this together. And, you know, when we kind of talked talk about the the topic for today um the download and, and the upload the finite and the infinite game i think there's a reason why a lot of us keep coming back week after week month after month and i think it's because we're all in the infinite game um i kept thinking to myself uh, all this week since we had that clubhouse chat uh i, I believe on tuesday or wednesday i forgot what day it was uh, um, that I that I was that I kept playing the the finite game that I'm just in it you know kind of for you know I'm at a job working you know working a nine to five just kind of in a finite game finite game and with an infinite goal but working you know playing the finite game but now you know looking back you know I've been with the system here uh with you guys with all of you guys seeing the same faces for you know many months now and i think you know i keep coming back and we all keep coming back because we're all in this infinite game here with a with an infinite goal to just collaborate communicate uh work together contribute something talent art creativity whatever it may be uh togetherness uh to to this to this group and so it's something that um has opened my eyes now and and that's why we keep coming back that's why i keep coming back uh i am in the infinite game uh, i believe in that so just wanted to thank the creators wanted to thank everyone here and even the new folks coming back um i mean coming in uh it's pretty cool pretty cool to see and pretty cool to be a part of and i can't wait for the accelerator to even uh kind of dig in deeper Thank now i'm gonna have some blueberries <laughs> Ooh, great question from james flynn expand a little bit on why you believe branding is dead it's gonna be our topic on um Clubhouse next week. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, so it's hyperbole. Obviously, we still are doing brands. We're still doing logos. We're still doing all these things. But if you notice how things are evolving, they're becoming living entities. And um, the ability to shift at the speed of um, history, um, meaning, you know, COVID, meaning like all these things that happen has a lot less to do with what the external manifestations of what people perceive as, you know, branding as designers, we make the surface. We don't make the center. We don't make the core of these things. And that's part of my purpose has been moving us out of being the people who make the surface and put, bringing us towards um, being those who make what it is that we're actually putting out. And by that, I don't mean you know, design services or like surface, I mean, 
you, you know, leave your brand in practice and like build a sustainable like matcha powder. I don't know. But I had an ad on YouTube, you know, from Mudwater and the guy used to be a designer, a UX designer. He's like, man, I was up all the time. And I was like, ah, so I said, you know what, I'm going to create this product and get out of that. And it's not because, because there's a, a, a part of it is really, I know that we have more to give the world than, than just supporting and, and doing those things. And I know we need to feed our families and our kids and do all those things, but thinking about branding beyond and in the infinite context will put you in a very different position, much higher level than you would ever imagine or dream to be by changing that mindset and saying, you know, it's not that branding is dead. How branding has been done up till now in the 20th century is not gonna be how branding is gonna be done in the future. That's that's my clarification. I hope that helps. Clip it. Yeah. <laughs> what does clip it mean? <laughs> like just this Thanks what Jesus that. said, please share it later. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, got it. This answer, just share it later. I would love to come back just to this part, what Jesus said. I want to listen to it like clearly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and, you know, to expand on that, it really applies to the infinite game. You know, the the brands that believe that they exist for a reason, right? The brands that exist uh, to, to create an impact for a greater good, their decision-making and their values, their value-based decision-making reflects that, how they present the copy that they use, who they are internally is who they are externally, right? Now we're starting to see that so many of these brands are just facades they're empty and we struggle with trying to build emotional relationships with them because there's no truth behind the brand there's no significance behind it and this is why all of these brands are struggling now it's why they jump through all of these different agencies to try to tell them how to tell their story and they can't tell the story. They go from agency to agency to agency because inherently they're empty. They're devoid of these values. They're devoid of these beliefs. They exist to make money. And we need deeper attachment to the people that we spend our resources with, to the companies that we spend our resources with. So if you are just sitting there trying to make money in your brand, the people are going to see that and they're going to be like, I don't stand for that. I can't follow you. I, I can't get along with your campaigns. It's just empty. They're facades. Joni? Yo. What up, Dan? So um, following on that, what is it going to mean for all the people that are falling out of brands they love because they realize they're empty? there's going to be greater opportunity, right? I believe that we're going to, we're entering, to, we are entering into a place of creative renaissance. I believe that those that live and believe and act and operate in truth are going to find phenomenal success because they are going to connect with people in ways that brands could never. And I truly believe that we're entering into a space of microeconomy. I think that the opportunities for brands are going to be endless because it's going to be harder and harder for one brand to serve everybody. We're, we're moving into communalism, you know, um, and especially after this period of the pandemic. Jose, I know you've got some, some awesomeness just from meet yourself. And drive no, you in. said it yourself. You said collective, collectivism, collectivism. I was going to say, Commun or you said communalism, collective branding, like brands that are an embodiment of all of the parts. Exactly. And so that's what that's how what I feel, you know, and I think we're starting to see it in the creative economy. Um, this is, you know, like, like, I'm truly driven because I think that there's going to be an opportunity for my people to really become free. And it's going to happen through collaboration, you know, internationally. And it's going to happen because we are going to be able to flex our collective cultural creative power. And I think if we can learn to own our cultural and creative power, we can learn to collaborate and we can operate with shared values for freedom, right? For, for the furthering 
of our communities and our people, then we can create some incredibly powerful experiences for the next generation and the generations thereafter. Perfect, thanks. You got it, bro. Alrighty, folks, we're a little over. It's 1237. We're perfect. But, um... Hey, Keone. Yo. What up, I have brother? a quick, quick church announcement before we take off for yeah. the day. Uh, next Tuesday, I'll be giving a Zoom talk on the hidden history of Black graphic designers in America uh, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Pacific time. So I just want to let everybody know if you have time to join in. And uh, yeah, it should be should be fun. Well, link is being requested. Yes. Okay. Share the link and then um, we're going to we're going to send out a couple emails this week to kind of prep you guys for our schedule next week. Um, and we'll add it in there. We'll start you know and for anyone else that's got anything else creative going on you know we'd love to highlight you you know and share the work and the stuff you're doing to the community i like that oh i i still need some feedback on a brief i'm working on so i i i would chat to you guys and if you could help me with some feedback next week it would be amazing totally man We'll make it happen. Can you put that much love slide? Uh, the, the last slide. Yeah, there we go. Love you guys. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Hardy. Marcio, un placer. Mucho gusto in Spanish. Todo bien. How do you say todo bien? Everything well? I mean, I, my Portuguese is horrible. Love you, honey. Thank you, James. Bye bye, guys. Why me? Zaijian.